Welcome to Season 4! Welcome to the Premier League! We are at the top of English football once again, at least divisionally. And hopefully, at some point in the next two to three seasons, come the end of the season, we'll be at the very top. The aim is to win the league before or in Season 6. Four, five, six. Within three years, I'd like to win the Premier League title. We'll wait and see how things go today. You'll notice that the 11 is shaped differently now. Charlie Barnett is up top in a 4-3-3 false nine as centre forward, although I've artificially moved him further forward so that he can still be as high up as possible, but still in that centre forward uh, role. That's as far as I can get him to still be centre forward. Uh, Pinto's back into the starting lineup and back at the club. He continues to divide the audience. 50% want him to stay, 50% want him to be sold. No. I don't know what to do. So, I went to try and move him to centre mid to get him involved in a midfield three. And uh, it's going to take like a year, so that was pointless. It was going to take two years to train Barnett to striker, so that was pointless. So thank you to uh, uh, whoever it was that mentioned about the 4-3-3 false nine in the comment section of the uh, season finale yesterday. That's been taken into action, although I have moved Barnett slightly further forward. Pinto, by default, was at a centre mid. I've moved him slightly further forward here so he can still be in a cam position. So he counts as uh, as a cam and that doesn't affect his overall. Uh, Gallagher was obviously in at CDM in this default position. It's going to take forever to train him at CDM. So I've artificially moved him slightly further forward. So he's now classed as a centre mid. So we have three centre mids, although one of them is by default a cam in the uh, starting lineup, And Barnett is a centre forward that's basically playing as a striker. So we're still kind of similar to how we were. It's just that the shape of the middle looks a bit different, and the wingers are higher up as well. On the transfer list currently is DeAndre Yedlin. Uh, I, as of yet, don't have anyone else transfer listed, other than players like Bonds who are already on the transfer list. Ivan Tony drops to the bench and will be our backup striker for the time being. I want to try this out and see if we can get Pinto involved in the starting lineup. There was calls to just move Barnett to striker, Pinto to Cam, and keep Gallagher and Wallace... Oh, sorry, calls to keep Tony up top, Keep Barnett at cam, drop Pinto into centre mid and uh, and have Wallace alongside him or Gallagher alongside him. But neither of them deserve to be dropped. So I've tried to incorporate all three and we didn't get much from Ivan Tony in the last half of last season. He did get some assists and if, he's, if we miss that creativity then we'll rethink it. But hopefully Pinto can add what we got from Barnett in the midfield last year and Barnett can just continue to do what he did last year again. That's the plan. Barnett and Wallace both have potential to be special, so they have to be in the starting lineup. Uh, with regards new signings, I really genuinely don't know how much we need at this stage. In season one of the Premier League, I have to give those that gave us the promotion the chance to keep us up and see what they can do at this level. There's certainly a starting eleven of the rating that should be arguably top half at a push with 83, 82, 80, 81, 80, 79's in there. George Long plays much above uh, a 76 rated goalkeeper. DeAndre Edlin is the only one on the transfer list as I say at present. Uh, Ivan Tony is my backup striker now with Barnett there at centre forward and um, still Billy Chadwick is uh, listed for transfer and or loan. I am wanting to sign a backup winger or two. We currently have Andrew and Barr or Nielsen. None of them are really good enough for the level we're at now. And uh, the top rated comment on the uh, the season finale yesterday was to sign Dean Garner from West Brom. By far the top comment as well because West Brom didn't come up. We did. And West Brom's still in the championship. And Dean Garner is certainly a player that could come in and would suit the squad role position that uh, we're looking to fill. So we have a transfer budget of £52 million, pounds, as you can see. Uh, with regards to what the board want from us, uh, youth-wise, sign one player as a midfielder, that's fine. Uh, two players younger than 20, oh, I'm not sure we're going to be able to do that, but it is only a low expectation. Sign one player from a different nationality of the club. I've tried to do that before when it hasn't worked, so I don't know whether it'll actually tick that or not. Financially, they want us to sell two players and sign two crucial players to replace them. Finish the season without any unspent transfer budget. 
They want me to gut the club of all money. That's something I've never seen before. Domestic success, they want mid-table, so the board think we can stay up as well. And round of 16 of the FA Cup, and obviously no continental success. I'm very surprised to see the, the thing say sell two players and sign two crucial players to re replace them. I'm kind of wary of doing that because I don't think it will actually register me doing it, which is strange to say, but I genuinely don't think it'll happen. So I'm probably not going to go out of my way to try and do that. I'll just have a transfer window and then we'll see what happens. Transfer window wise, Yedlin, Chadwick, Bonds and Cartwright still on the transfer list and Shorter still available for loan. We might look to buy another goalkeeper in uh, January, potentially. Although we do have Oberg as current backup. Uh, just to double check, Wallace should have the potential to be special. Barnett definitely does this year and I'm pretty sure that uh, that Wallace does as well. He does indeed. And Ewing actually is on a two-year loan at Bretois, at Stad Bretois. So uh, I won't be able to utilize him in the midfield this year, but hopefully if he grows by as much this year as he did last year, then he'll definitely be first team quality next season. Greg Doherty's 26. No point moving him on and replacing him. He's the same rating as Wallace and is just as effective. Dave Gunn is a player I'd probably consider loaning out. But then I really would need another central midfielder for this season or another option. But I guess the Angana is going to come in, hopefully, and, and fill that role there. But mm, maybe we do on the main. But I think we could probably do with maybe loaning a centre mid in if we can. But because it was the highest rated and very popular option of the last episode, I'm just going to go straight out and try and buy him. Uh, try and buy Dian Garner here in this first episode. Do please let me know your feedback in the comment section down below. I will not record tomorrow's episode until you've seen this one. I'll be live streaming on Twitch as you see this video. So come across and join me and I'll be uh, live until about 6 o'clock where I'll then go offline, get the feedback from this video and go and record tomorrow's episode. So uh, 24 is 24 and a half is what he's valued at. It didn't think we'd have to pay much more than that to try and get him they want 35.3 that is definitely more than I'd be willing to pay but I'm I'd probably go as high as 28 29 I want to be wary of spending all of my money in just the one dealing and then not having enough to do anything else a little bit further down the line 28 million pounds would they accept that 31 point they are coming down but if they'll if they'll accept 29 then I'm thrilled if they don't then Ah, uh, they have. Oh, thank God. Okay, good. Dan Garner should be it. What's he on a week at the minute? £45,000. Coming up to the Premier League, he may want a bit of a boost in wages. Or uh, I'll try and get him to, to agree rotation if possible. He still wants important. Well, I'm going to have to accept that because I'm not giving him crucial. And if he doesn't accept... It won't let me offer him rotation again, and he definitely won't accept sporadic, will he? Uh, so now we've... All right, length of contract is fine. We'll just try and get as long a contract as we possibly can. Five years is brilliant. Release clause, no release clause. That's exactly what we would want. And then wage-wise, are you going to give me any idea of what he wants? No. I'll offer him what he's currently on. And a signing bonus of, like, £500,000. That should sway it. And indeed it has. Good. So, Dian Garner's in. We have ourselves a new squad player that is not of Premier League quality yet. But, to be fair, maybe he is of Premier League quality. Now he's grown a bit. 86 pace, uh, 80 dribbling, 74 passing. His shooting's not the best. Finishing of 72, though, is not the worst. So, uh, some decent stats and should be a good bench option. Bayard and McLaughlin, I'm quite happy with the defence as, as it is. Yes, McLaughlin's not that high rated. Doesn't matter. He's very, very, very useful. And always does the job when called upon. In the preseason tournament, we've Torino, Hertha Berlin and Lille in our uh, group. As you can see, there's a minimum, or sorry, maximum of about £8 million to be won from this preseason tournament. So absolutely, we can uh, we can raise some extra funds here if we can get the results in this preseason tournament. We've had a transfer offer for Ivan Tony from Blackburn. They've offered me a 77-rated CDM. Plus £4.3 million. Pounds. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Now we are going to be in a situation where we're probably going to get some bids for our top players from some top clubs. Because they are higher rated and we're in our first season at the Premier League. I don't 
want to gut the team because we basically all of my high rated players like Lewis Potter, like Wilkes, like Barnett, like Conor Gallagher. I'm going to get bids like this all window long now. And I in this first season, I don't want to sell them. If we don't achieve a top half finish, I will sell them next season. Or if we're having a terrible year by January, then I'll consider selling them in January. But in this first summer window, I want the boys that brought us up to have the chance to keep us up and see what they can achieve for Hull City in the Premier League. That might not be a wholeheartedly agreeable... Uh... Oh, interest for Botman. Now nah, we're fine. Uh, Nothing from Dortmund. They've offered me... Who have they offered me? Gabriel Paulista. Plus... Conor Gallagher, apparently, is going to be the man that is uh, wanted by everybody. But we spent ages trying to get him in. It took two or three windows to get Conor Gallagher to agree a move to the club. We tried loaning him. It didn't work. We had to wait until we could afford to buy him. And then we were able to bring him in. And like I say, I want this team to show me that they can hold their own in the Premier League. If by January we're performing terribly, then fine. We'll look to sell some players and rebuild. But... Um, I can't help feeling like Pinto, yes, he's 89 rated and perhaps it's a bit unrealistic to keep him in the side. But someone actually made this, uh, this point in the comments and I, I tended to agree with it. An 89 rated Pinto will have less of an effect on our performance as a club than selling him and having 200 million to improve the squad would have. We'd actually be more unrealistic as a first league Premier League side spending 200 million pounds or 250 million pounds and improving everywhere than we would be uh, just having Pinto in the starting lineup. So I'm going to keep Pinto in the starting lineup. Uh, Josh Emmanuel, let's actually take him out. He's really struggling. We'll throw Bayar in for this one. And uh, maybe we'll give Diangana a start as well out on the left hand side. Change that to right wing back. There we go. Uh, that will be the only change. Maybe we'll just go Doherty for Wallace just for stamina. And see if we can't get results here against Torino to send us through to the knockout stages of this preseason tournament. It's a defeat against Torino. I don't know if that's us through or us out. It is us through. We are through to the next round of this preseason tournament. Fantastic. 1.1 million pounds added to the budget. Brilliant. Right, I'm actually going to go and do some training now. And then I'll see you in the game against Schalke. Right, here we go, Schalke. I've had a train. Uh, some players have recovered stamina, some haven't. I, we're probably going to lose this. They've got Moise Keane up top. So that's said uh, um, McKenney in the midfield. Holgate at centre-back for them, which is strange to see from uh, formerly of Everton. I don't know of any other Holgate. It's presumably Mason. But we lose on penalties, unfortunately, in the semi-final of the pre-season tournament. So do we actually get any money for lose going out in the semi-final? Or we do get some. We get 2.7 million is not bad for going out in the semi-final. We'll take that. So I will advance as the far as the first Premier League game of the season, which is, I thought for a minute it was Manchester United. What a first month. Man United and Liverpool. Uh, Crystal Palace away on the 6th. That's as far as I'll go. And we'll go and play that in today's episode so you have some match action. But there'll probably be some transfer window action with regards bids coming in. Ivan Tony bid from Hanover. They've offered me Maximiliano Mazer as well, a 75-rated cam. Just not interested in that. And Lyon have offered me Brian and Bueno, uh, an 80-rated right winger plus 9.8 million pounds for Sturgeon, who's valued at 44 million. So again, like I say, in this first summer window, I'm not really willing to let any of my bigger players go. But if things aren't going according to plan in January, then we will have to rethink. But as a newly promoted club, I want to stand firm and say, these players got us up. We want them to have the chance in this first season, or at least the first part of this first season, to see what they can do in the Premier League for Hull City. I think they've earned the right to challenge in the Premier League for this club, and we've earned the right by sticking with a number of a number of them for a number of years and not replacing them on the way up from League One for a number of them. We've earned the right as a club to be, look, look, we've given you the right to the Premier League. Stay with us for at least the first season at the Premier League and see what we can achieve together. And then if things don't go according to plan, then we can take it from there. But I'm going to keep advancing through and doing all of the training, etc. I will see you either at the game against Crystal Palace or probably more likely when there are some transfer bids that come in for me to, uh, to bring to you and either discuss with regards whether we're going to accept it or not 
or if we get to the point of having enough, uh, you know, a bid for a player that I don't want, then we'll see how much money we've got left after that. And then you guys know exactly how much we've got to spend by the time we get to uh, you leaving your comments. A loan offer from Antwerp for Gun. It's a loan to buy, which we will delegate to just the loan for one year. I'd be happy to let Gunn go on loan for a year, but that would mean that I would then definitely be looking for a central midfielder. Because if you are now running three outright centre mids, basically, I would pretty much, with Main only being 70, 67 rated, I pretty much need another central midfielder at the club. Probably higher rated than Gunn as well, preferably. So I'll wait and see what your feedback is on that. That might well be where we spend the rest of our money on a central midfielder. We have £26 million here. We'll try and raise a little bit more if we can. And I think probably, probably the next signing I want from you is going to be a centre mid. Either a centre mid or a cam. Someone that can come in and replace Pinto at cam. Or because he's he is actually by default now a cam in that position. So a centre mid or a cam is probably where we're going to buy next. But who we buy is up to you. For the first time in a little while, a just straight cash bid. Palmer have come in for Ivan Tony of, with an offer of £13 million. Now he, he has or will be dropped from the first team. But again, unless an offer is just ludicrous, which some may be, some may not be. I think, I think I'm going to stick to my guns. I think I'm going to stick to my guns and keep this squad together and only add to it this season rather than, or add to it in this window. Like I say, I am open to changing things around in January if things aren't going our way, but I'm kind of optimistic that with the growth the squad had last year, we can really challenge for a top half finish in this first season in the Premier League. I'll wait and see what you guys think in the comments section, of course, but that that's my thinking right now. Gunn is going to go to Antwerp on loan for the year, so that just reiterates the fact that yes, we absolutely do need a central midfielder, please. Newcastle have now offered me Hakan Jalanolu and £5.4 million for Conor Gallagher. Jalanolu is an 81 rated cam at this stage at 29 years of age. That is a pretty obvious no. I mean, a, a 29 rated version of a player that I've already got who's much younger than that. <laughs> That's... Even if we hadn't just got promoted, that is a straight no. Shorter with a loan to buy. We will delegate that delegate that into just a regular loan. And hopefully we can get him some loan football. But we are here now at the game against Crystal Palace. We'll have our post, sorry, pre-match press conference. Hello! Uh, pre-match press conference. Of course, improvements don't happen overnight. And there's a lot of work to be done at the club. But do you think the team's ready to avoid the embarrassment of a bottom half finish? Uh, we, yeah, first and foremost, we want to make sure that we're safe. Obviously, as a newly promoted club, I have to say that, even though we know we've got ambitions higher than that. Preseason has been difficult for Pinto. He struggled for form and fitness. Uh, I mean, every player has to earn his place. And Pinto, if he doesn't perform, then he doesn't perform. But, uh, yeah, I'd like more squad depth. That's what we're looking for, isn't it? Squad depth in a central midfield role. But Pinto, I'm intrigued to see how he plays. Obviously, he was 82 rated when we... Uh, when we last saw him, now he's 89 rated, is absolutely rapid, has world-class dribbling and passing. 87, sorry, 99 short pass, 84 long pass, 84, 87 long shots. His finishing's up to 74 now. He should be a worldy player. And it's a time to see how good Charlie Barnett could be leading the line again. He's not done that for a while, since the early 70s with regards to his match rating. But he was brilliant last season. And I hope he can be again this year. Emmanuel's up to 78. Barnett's up to 81. Wilkes is up to 83. The side is already growing this season. Can we hit the ground running in the Premier League? Palace lining up with a 4-4-2. Wilfred Zaha and Jordan Ayew as the front four. Conan, Bolly, Kumbola and Malassia at the back with Wamangituka, Arnold, Santa Maria and Amoyini out wide on the left. I think it was Jack Butland in goal, was it? Just double check. I think, it, I think that was Jack Butland, wasn't it? It is. Jack Butland in goal for Crystal Palace. Okay, they're playing an old school 4-4-2. We are trying out... Well, it is more of a 4-3-3. It, on, by default, it was a false nine, but because it's going to take so long to change Barnett to a striker, I was basically put him in a striker's role whilst he still classes as a centre-forward so he doesn't get any 
uh, negatives on his uh, on his overall rating. So we're lined up with a 4-3-3 that should still hopefully play more, more like a 4-2-3-1 than uh, it would have done had we not altered some players' positions. Wallace is going to get his first chance in the Premier League. A number of these players getting their first chance at this level. And we'll see if they're any good at this level. But we started off by being defensively solid. And maybe we can get a win on opening day away from home at Selhurst Park. On the overlap, Calamelda. Some calls from some Aussie fans to keep Calamelda in, which we'll certainly do. 78 or 79 rated now, so definitely good enough. That's a foul on Ayu, but surprised to see them playing Zaha at striker, but I guess in a 4-4-2, you probably would, rather than if they're playing a 4-3-3 perhaps, or a 4-2-3-1, then maybe you'd expect Zaha out wide, but with a very strict 4-4-2, he's going to play at striker, but hopefully we can keep him quiet. It was his header there, but a simple save for uh, the keeper, and Charlie Barnett could be played in. Entertaining opening 10 minutes here. Charlie Barnett's actually in really nicely and we'll pull it back. And Wallace! No! Off the base of the post! Oh, can't believe it. Rob Wallace so close to Hull City's first goal back at Premier League level. It could have been one of our potential to be special stars, but it wasn't. Wallace to Pinto. Driven into Lewis Potter. Palace dropping deeper and deeper, as Derek Ray quite rightly said, but... They can spring a counter-attack with the pace they've got in the side, then we're going to have to be ready for it. Here's Malassia. He's a very fast left-back. Oini. Back to Malassia again. And Santa Maria will try and build through the middle for Palace, but that's not gone well. Tried to squeeze a ball through a gap that wasn't there. That's a very Chesnoy gaming thing to do. Here's Pinto. What's he going to do for me here? Other than maybe... Oh, feed Malik Wilkes! Yes! The first goal of Hull City's return to the Premier League is scored by Malik Wilkes. With the assist from Leonardo Pinto. Back in the team, back at the club, back affecting things. Leonardo Pinto with a great run, good dribbling, finds the pass and buried by Malik Wilkes. A great start to Premier League life for Hull City. Solid tackle from Josh Emmanuel. Lassie with a throw. Oh, Wilkes just arrives and intercepts. That'll do. Tough very much. Oh, hello. Keen Lewis Potter making a run on the far side. We've seen that before. Unfortunately, can't find him on this occasion. Silas, well blocked by Elde. Should get to that first two, but Silas has won it back. Willy Bolly across to Kumbala. A couple of unfamiliar names in this uh, Crystal Palace starting lineup. Kumbala and Santa Maria being two that I don't recognise. Some obviously unfamiliar names with uh, Jack Butland, etc. Being in the starting line and Willy Bolly. Obviously not Crystal Palace players in real life, but uh, I don't even recognise the names of uh, Santa Maria or or Kumbulla. You guys probably do. But a number of you have a much larger, broader knowledge of world football than I do. Unfortunately, we can't get a ball into the box there to look for a second goal, but Jordan I will get this back to Santa Maria here and actually on the counter attack, we might be in trouble. I can't draw, played a quick ball, he's offside thankfully, trying to break the offside trap, but not working for Awani. And he, as Josh Emmanuel, actually that was, that was me. I didn't intend to play the offside trap. I was just trying to close the man down. I was like, do I go to the ball or do I go to the man? I thought I'll go to the ball. And actually by stepping like that, that was, what seemed like a rather well-timed manual offside trap that was actually just accidental. But I'll take it. I could try and play it off that I meant that. And I was like, oh, that's a wonderful, wonderful offside trap played by me there. But <laughs> I wasn't doing that. I was just trying to close the ball down. Can Calamelda get a touch and a ball in? See us in the way. We might as well stay with me till half time then. And we'll try and get a second goal here. Keen Lewis Potter delivers the ball well away by Willy Bolly. And that is probably going to be 1-0 at half time. Wilkes to Wallace, across to Pinto, and Elder. Look at Keen Lewis Potter, he's just such an active player. It's a joy to play with, because he's always on the move, always trying to make something happen offensively. Absolutely brilliant player. I've no idea what he's like in real life, I have to be honest. I can't say as I've followed Hull City's progress in League One this season with much intrigue whatsoever, but certainly enjoying playing with them here on FIFA. And this new formation, whilst it is quite different... Ah, 1-1. One, one. 
Whilst it is quite different, I'm actually enjoying playing with it. It doesn't feel too dissimilar from the 4-2-3-1 that we had been playing with just, or 4-4-1-1 four, four, one, one, as it was, with just centre forward right behind a striker. Pinto is pushing on and uh, it's working well. Not well enough for us to hold on to our lead defensively, but still, I don't feel too... It doesn't feel like we've made a change in formation, basically, is what I'm trying to say. And uh, I'm confident that we can make this formation work. And I'm confident that we will make the personnel work as well. Pinto's been decent. Charlie Barnett hasn't had an opportunity yet, but everyone has quiet games from time to time. And I haven't created that much. As an hour goes, we are at 1-1 at Selhurst Park. And good value for at least a point. Hopefully, though, we can steal all three as Crystal Palace take off Santa Maria and bring on Everetsi Ezi in his place. Inside to Pinto, who actually we haven't had any interest in in this window yet. No bids for Leonardo Pinto whatsoever to this point. So maybe nobody can really justify affording him or they think he's all rating and no performance or no quality. It's just an overall rating and not actually symbolic of his quality in game he has got an assist for us in this one so perhaps the quality is there i'm not sure i am surprised actually that we haven't had any bids for him so far elder i'm going to try and put this for dean garner and just race away if i can down the line here literally running on the line to keep it in it's just got the pace to keep away from a tired uh defender but that's going to come back to him actually and Dean Garner brings that down nicely Charlie Barnett oh just arrived in a good position and a look to find him through the legs of the defender here he is Charlie Barnett can he get an assist to Conor Gallagher can, can Conor Gallagher Conor Gallagher get an assist for Greg Doherty no on all fronts but we do have a corner right Pinto to deliver the corner on this occasion then and it's whipped well Doherty's up oh, and unfortunately it's going to fall free to Willy Bolly at the back post eight minutes to go we look like we're going to get at least a point in our first game at Premier League level. But could it be more than that with a last gasp winner? Maybe. Here's Owani. Kuyate. Back to Silas. Kimbula over the top. Malassia around the corner. And Josip Ilicic is in here for Palace. Although he's had to turn and look for support. Ezi. He's got a good goal recently. After a lovely solo run for Crystal Palace. Doherty will get it forward. Got caught there, but hopefully play can continue. Barnett's made the run. Ah, but the pass is poor from Malik Wilkes. And there goes our final chance of having the opportunity to win, you feel. Unless we can steal it off them in this final third now, but it doesn't look likely and definitely isn't. Now they've pinged all the way to Zaha. And it might, in fact, be Crystal Palace that win this game late on. If it weren't for Reese Burke's interception there and then Sturyu's decent header. There's the final whistle. It's a point. In our first game in the Premier League, back to top flight action for Hull City fans. Palace fans are not happy with the draw against recently promoted sides, but I'm quite happy with that point. We were creative enough, I think, but obviously could have done with more possession football. Everton get a 2-1 win, despite the fact that Richarlison has been sold to Barcelona. Uh, Manchester United draw 1-1 with Leicester City. You can see that Richarlison move. Wow. Oh, that was from PSG. Richarlison from PSG to Barcelona. So they finished, uh, or they got the win there despite the loss of Calvert-Lewin, who's gone to Manchester United. Uh, Jonathan David, is, as you can see, they've gone from Lille to PSG, presumably then their Richarlison replacement. It's been a huge window so far then. Almiron has gone to Celta Vigo. Uh, Lee has gone to Borussia Mönchengladbach. But that is as far as I will go in today's episode. Uh, we have tomorrow then Manchester United... <laughs> Liverpool and Southampton to round out the month of January, but I have £28.67 million available and I would like a squad central midfielder, please, lads. A squad level central midfielder. I'm not going to go for Solis now. I'm not going to go for... Well, Botman's just recently transferred, so we're not definitely not going to go for Botman now. Um, but I would like a squad central central midfielder, please. I still have DeAndre Ed that I could raise some extra money with. So there's probably about another 5 million there. So I probably have about 32-ish. Or I could use DeAndre, Le DeAndre Yedlin in a move. Let me know your feedback in the comment section down below. 
I shall record the video later on this afternoon. Once you've left your feedback, do come and join me on the link in the description. I'll be live over, live streaming over on Twitch at about 6 o'clock tonight. We're in the championship with Cambridge United. So uh, come and join me. But for now, thank you very much for watching this video. Drop it a like rating if you enjoyed. Again, of course, leave your feedback down below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you tomorrow for episode 2 and Manchester United and Liverpool in the Premier League.